All right. All right. What's up, man? How's it going? Got this thing. Right. Now I, just, now I just have to get this contraption. There we go. Nice bet. <laughs> right? You like you like my ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. What's All up, right. buddy? So now we now we can do this thing. Now we can do it. Um so this is uh James with uh Rock and BBQ. You're in Northern California? Uh yeah, Central California. We're uh, we're Central? up in uh, yeah, we're up in uh, Sonora. We're in the foothills. Sonora, okay. Yeah. Um and what I met you through Facebook or Yeah. I forget how we crossed paths. I think I was going to I was going to buy a smoker from you or something. You had you had Oh yeah. Something. You were going to buy the backwoods for my That's buddy. Right. That's right. <laughs> that whole thing. So then uh, you came out with some rubs and sauce. Yep. Still think your sauce is one of the top sauces out there. Yeah. Just straight out of the bottle. It It's really good. I appreciate that. Uh, man. So uh, let's talk about your, your start into barbecue, your – what what got you started? What age were you? You know. Uh, let's see. Well, first I was born in. Um, I'm from Texas. I'm from West Texas, so I was born and raised in a town called Lubbock. Um, actually, I'm from outside that little, a little, uh, little town. So barbecue, man. I mean, in Texas, we just that's what we do. It's like breathing down there, you know. So we we just started that way. Um, my family wasn't really into it, but uh, I had some friends that did uh, some barbecue stuff. I did a competition when I was like 15, and I kind of got hooked. So um, I, I did a did a brisket cook. There was an old man in town. I was like, man, this stuff is amazing. How do you how do you do it? And um, he set me up with a little cheap offset smoker. And gave me a, a full pack of brisket and said, "Learn how to cook this, and you can cook anything." And so, I've been kicking at it since then. Um, I'm almost forty now, so it's been a few years. And um, I started doing developing different rubs and stuff because most of the commercial rubs that that were on the market, um, I just didn't like the salt content. Man, it's, everybody thinks Texas is salt, pepper, garlic, but in West Texas, it's more uh, more Spanish uh, flair, right? So we got a little more, uh, a few different flavors and spices in there. So okay. I started started doing it from there. And then what about, f I don't know, maybe five years ago, uh, my wife and her family, they're all from, uh, from up here in Sonora. And I moved out here to California, and I got hungry. So... We started cooking for friends and family, and then uh, we started catering and competing, and now we do everything right. fully engulfed. So, so what kind of what kind of cookers did you start on when you were first starting out? The first one I ever cooked on was um, it was like a I don't even know the brand. It was, I mean it was just a little pot metal offset, cheap cheapo uh, offset smoker, no reverse flow, no nothing. It was just just the cheapest smoker you could get at that point. Uh, right. That's where I started. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man, you had to fight that thing to make, you had to yeah. be on top of it, keep maintain temps. It was, it was no joke. Yeah. But, I had one like that for a while. Uh, I was doing smoking fish on it, stuff like that, but right. I wasn't really using it the right way. Um, here in California, you, you kind of learn backwards. You use right. something wrong forever and then you're like oh i'm supposed to use it like this oh yeah that works oh, yeah. a lot better you know <laughs> so right. there from that cheap offset what what did you what you jump to um let's see i have i either own or have owned pretty much every type of smoker on known to man so um i can't even remember what i went to after that i think i i um I went from that cheap one. I built a reverse flow. Um, I built a. I did the whole propane tank, 
okay. reverse flow. Um, we built that, built a trailer, um, did that whole thing. Okay. Uh, then after that, um, now that I'm out here, I'm looking on my collection. Like I've got, uh, I got a Kamado Joe. Um, I've got a, a Green Mountain, um, oh. which um, I was always against the pellet hoopers, man. But <laughs> you know, they have their purpose. They have. I mean, they. It's just like any other tool in the toolbox, man. You you have to be able to use what you know. Every every smoker I have runs different, and it has different flavors. So yeah um i've also got a um a barrel um i've got a big reverse flow on a trailer that we used to cater with um i did have an old hickory um but sadly uh that that didn't make it uh i had a i, I had a cto a, yeah i had a cto and um i had my big catering trailer um okay. and last year at the end of the season we were leaving a venue and and uh i had a little accident and oh. so i lost the trailer and the and the smoker so oh sorry to hear about that yeah i was i was more bummed about losing the smoker than the trailer wow so uh, but yeah it was because i had welded and attached it to the trailer the ins insurance company wouldn't let me keep it so oh man uh, yeah i was i tried i tried to buy it back and everything but they wouldn't they wouldn't have it so really wow i don't know food truck business man they don't play so right so what what are what's i mean you're you're building smokers now so yeah you know for me to ask you this question is kind of no but you know if you could go out and have any smoker right now you know no money's not an issue what would you go buy right now um honestly man i i i want a, a yoder i want the ys 1500 man <laughs> that's what i want <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna go, I, that's what I want. That's I. Why? Why do you want it? I'm just interested. Why do you want the 1500? <clears throat> um, so my buddy uh, George from Coach's Pit, um, he cooks on yoders, okay. and he's got both of them. He's got the what is it, the 640 and the 1500. Okay. Um, and we were at a competition in Lodi. I think it was Lodi earlier uh, this year before all the the Rona hit, and. Uh, I got to see both of them, put my hands on them. They're just, I mean, for what I build, um, I build old school, like solid welded, full lawn, right? right. I mean, I, if I build it, it's gonna be overbuilt most of the time. Um, right. So, and the Yoder is kind of, it feels like that, right? I mean, the, the steel they use, it's just heavy. It's just, it just feels solid. Right. Um, and the 1500, just because it's the biggest one they think that I see they have right now, so. I'm you know, a clear one. I know, but the, <laughs> for my purpose, right? For your purpose. Yeah. So I had I, one at one time. I had a yeah. 1500 for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I just found for my purpose and the catering I was doing. Right. Wasn't really conducive to cooking on both shelves. Right. Because the top shelf comes out, but the bottom one doesn't. Yeah. So if you had that bottom one like loaded down and then you had the top one loaded down it's just it's hard to flip things it's hard to rotate things yep and i just i found it to be kind of a just kind of a, an issue with me so right um i got rid of it i ended up uh, buying the pits and spits i have now um to replace it right so as far as how it ran, it it was a hungry thing. It yeah. uh definitely liked to to chew up the pellets. Oh man! Uh, but that's, that's my other thing, man. Is the the yoder it, it, the pellet consumption on it? The way they engineer and build it with the pot being on the on the far left side, you know? Yeah. If it it does seem like it would eat more pellets, you know, like my GMG that I have, I I just got a prime. And that thing, it's, I used to talk so much trash on GMG, right? But <laughs> because I got one of the first ones, I got, I got the choice. And it just, for, and I used it doing catering and stuff. And I, I beat the hell out of that thing. And it just, it, it wasn't meant for that, right? Right. And so um, 
they came back and knew the prime and the new prime plus and it's it's sick man but i i like i've looked at those pits um the pits and spits man those things are those yeah and i'm not awesome. i'm not knocking yoder at all you know i think for sure fit and finish the way it looks it looks yeah. impressive the fit and finish is nice oh yeah it looks like that big strong beefy smoker right um and it performs really well also, you know? Right. Um, so I'm not knocking it at all. Um, but for my purposes and how much food I was turning over and... and you need that second rack to cook. I need second, even third rack at sometimes, you know, with the bits and spits I have. Right. So, um, but the way it's built and the way it looks, like, you walk up to that thing and it's like... You, you almost don't even feel like it's a pellet smoker, you know? Right, right, it, exactly. You're like, wow, where you put the wood at? Because <laughs> it looks like that, you know? So I, th I think that's high. what they base them off of, you know, because they have their wood burner line too. Yeah. And it almost looks like what you said. It, it looks like they took one of their offsets and was like, cut the box off, throw the pellet hopper on, and here we go. Okay. <laughs> right. So maybe right. that's why I like them, just because yeah. it reminds me of, the you know the old school offsets like i'm used to cooking on right right so what what is what is it that you like to cook for yourself or what what's your favorite thing to cook honestly man it's that's hard for me because um doing catering and doing competition stuff i i don't know i think i get more satisfaction out of cooking uh my ribs um just i it would you would think it would be brisket but i i've cooked so many briskets that it's just kind of like i kind of i got a brisket I, the ribs though the ribs are ever changing you know they're ever yeah. evolving and that's probably one of my favorite things to do um because my other thing is i'm i'm a pretty competitive person right yeah. and so um we've done really well in comps with our ribs um, and lately with our brisket too, but with the ribs, more people are proud of their ribs than you would hear anything else, right? I mean, you hear right. barbecue, you look up pictures, it's rib picks for days. Right. Um, man, I feel like that's, that's what I'm, that's my favorite thing to cook because we're, I mean, we're good at it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Without without divulging too many secrets, because I yes. know competition world is very secretive. What you know? What's your basic, you know, overview of your rib cook? Are you doing a three two one? Are you you doing a, a modified three two one? I do a modified version of it. Um, I'm a firm believer in wrapping, um, so um, especially now. I mean. Everything we cook is pretty much low and slow, except for our ribs. Our ribs are kind of hot and fast style, and so we, we like to wrap. Um, it's it's kind of a, I'd say more of like a um, two, one and a half, half maybe, uh, okay. along those lines. Um, and um, Are you using a drum? Are you cooking those on a drum? Yeah, yeah. So the okay. last few times we cooked on a drum um, – uh, we've actually been transitioning over uh, to. Um, I'll, I'm going to be. We're going to be trying the the uh, pellet world in uh, our next comp. Okay. Um, consistency is key, man. And you know, I said we we were at Lodi with George and and Coach's Pit and some other guys. And uh, the funny thing is, man, they used my my rubs and my stuff, and and they beat me. And I'm like, how can you do that? That's my stuff, right? Like, I don't understand it. But um, the weather was not our friend uh, that weekend, and uh, the wind played a huge factor in it. When you're cooking on a reverse flow and the wind's blowing like 20, 30 miles an hour, that yeah. bad wood turns into a convection oven. Right. And um, so anyway, um, we do cook on a barrel. Um, I, I don't cook on a fancy barrel. I, I cook on a... Uh, uh it's just an ugly drum so you need this homemade uh it is yeah yeah it's um right it's, off it's a little over engineered but whatever it <laughs> looks cool 
it it looks hey, cool. Whatever, so, whatever. But yeah, so th that's that's kind of where we're. I'd say, uh, you know, on our ribs, man. Back to that. That's where we do. Uh, I mean, that's just basic. Nothing fancy. We don't do anything right. special. Right. Nothing. I th I think barbecue and, and it's at its finest is simple. I think when people start over over complicating it, that's when it that's when it doesn't be, it becomes where it's not fun anymore. Yeah, so, but we both know that competition ribs are not oh. your everyday e eating ribs. You know. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> hey, I'll put it this way: that first bite's good, but after that, I wouldn't want to sit down and eat a plate of it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> You know, so where, where do you want to go, man? What, what, what's your end all be all? What, what would you, what, where do you want to take this barbecue thing? Do you want to open up a shop? Do you want to just cater? Do you want to truck it? You know, so uh, the last year, a uh, little over a year, uh, we went full time doing catering. That was our sole source of income. Um, and it, to me, uh, it took that it took the joy away from it, man. It just, we were doing the constant grind, the constant hustle. Um, cause food business is, it's no joke, man. So, I mean, it's, a, it's a hard, hard way to make a living. And, yeah. um, I still enjoy catering. Um, but we've kind of backed off of it this year. So we're not, we're not going to really, uh, we're not really pushing for that, man. I don't, at some point, maybe late in my future, um, you know, if if something happens the right way, um, we may open up a small shop way further down the line. But it's not really something we're looking to do at this point. Um, I have more fun. Like I said, we have um, four products on the or on the market right now. I, I get more enjoyment out of seeing people enjoy those um, than I do actually going out and doing that stuff. Um, I want to. I want to focus more on doing competition stuff, um, pushing that. Uh, so, so you that's, you're kind of good. You're you're at that point right now where, you know, like you said, you you pushed it into catering and yeah. it took away some of that joy. You know, so right. That's a that's a good reflection because I know there's a lot of people out there that think they want that next level right. you know right myself it, like i do some catering and i do some meat sales but i've never really wanted to take that next step into like full time this is your gig because right. i'm afraid i might lose that passion for for barbecuing right um, and then the things never really added up to do it either. So that's also a big plus. <laughs> right. Right. But, but I can respect that, you know, I can respect uh, where you're coming from just because it's a huge step to take that step to do that, you know? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I got a pretty secure job and I have you know, retirement wrapped up in that job. And right. if I walk away from it now, you know, it, it's, it wouldn't be what what it could be if I just stay there and and grind out that job for another fifteen years. But right, you know, it's it's always tempting every once in a while to talk about it, to think about it. But then I talk to gentlemen like you and guys that have stepped out like that and said, "Nah, this ain't for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna step back a step and and do what I feel I can do with enjoyment and and." and still have a passion to do it. Right. And I'll, you know, I'll earn my money somewhere else, basically. That's it, man. You got to, I mean, for me, the biggest part of it was, um, my, my joy for, for a barbecue. It, it kind of all happened real quick when I moved to California, because, um, in this area we had, like I said, I got hungry, man, cause I wanted something good to eat. We started sharing it. I mean, and it literally, it, it took off within months of just, hey, can you cook for this? Can you cook for that? And I started rolling in jobs, and the money was great. And I'm like, heck, yeah, man, this is awesome. We're rolling this thing. Um, so I built a custom trailer, a uh, full-on custom trailer catering. I mean, so we, we were in it. I mean, I'm still in it. 
um, I still have catering jobs and, and I, like I said, I enjoy it. I just, once at the end of last year, all the things that happened, losing our, our big trailer. I mean, I had a 22 foot food truck, porch trailer. The, I mean, wow. I had everything. It was in, it kind of all, it was a blessing really to me because my stress level was through the roof. My health was in the dumpster. I mean, it was just because, wow. you know, and, and you got to think about it too. I mean, to me, I've got small kids and um, you miss when you're catering, you got to think about it. You're working when everybody else is having, you know, when they're off having parties and holidays, you're the one providing that, that service. So right. um, I have a ton of respect for the people that jump out and, and go full bore. I mean, right. like I, said, um, I just, I know I realized in my situation, it just wasn't, it wasn't where I wanted to be at that point. And um, I'm always willing to help people that want to go to that route. Cause we've been there, you know, like, if somebody says, hey, I want to go catering and I want to go do restaurants or um, festivals or whatever, I'm, I'm down to kind of help people and guide them in the right direction because we've made all the mistakes. We've cost ourselves thousands of dollars. And it's not, that's, not right. a lesson, that's not a lesson you want to learn. I mean, really, it's just not. Right. Um, my wife is a, is a key part in that. And she, you know, as far as the financial part of it, she's – she's like, Hey, we shouldn't do that. Or we should do this or whatever. And, and I'm a go, 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 let's go. And so it takes that balance too. So right on. right on. So why don't you tell everybody how to find you on all your social media? Um, how to get a hold of you for some sauce, you know, Okay. Um, let everybody know how to, how to get in contact with you. Okay. So, so we, uh, we're at rock and com. Um, you can catch us, uh, there, um, on our website You can get all of our sauces, uh, on site right now, uh, within the next couple of weeks, we'll be hitting stores. Um, so with our new labels and new products, um, Oh, you could be in stores. Yeah, we, we, um, I waiting on a shipment date. For, okay. Uh, we, that, that's another big, big thing is, uh, when you go from, um, small time packaging yourself and packaging and labeling and then I just couldn't keep up so we finally went with a co-packing company and um, that took almost a year to get the recipes right and and, and uh, my uh, first big bulk uh, order from them will be here in I think about a week week and a half maybe two weeks so okay. once it hits and my once it that's hits spicy, our, that's spicy barbecue sauce you guys make that sauce Man, it's it's good, dude. It's it's got some deep flavors. Yeah. I mean, I I don't put sauce on brisket, you know, I'm just not right. that guy. Yeah. But as far as everything else goes, I don't know. That sauce is good, man. Yeah, that that one's our biggest like it's funny cuz out here um out here on the left coast, man, uh, that that sweet and spicy, it, we can't keep it. And um uh, the name changed a little bit, sweet and sassy now, but okay. um, um, we just can't keep that one out here. Um, but when we go back home, the original sauce, man, it's the same way. It's just the reverse, you know, rolling. Um, right on. That that you know, we got the the uh, two rubs, two sauces. We got a couple more rubs we're working on. So, um, but yeah, that sweet and spicy, man. That hey, if you want to know a, a trick. <laughs> uh, competition I'm just telling you competition trick um we've got two we got five teams right now um a couple backyard guys and a couple kcbs guys that have started using the uh sweet and spicy and hitting with it so um <laughs> it's something different you know yeah it's something it's something that, that you're not going to just go jump in the shelf and buy it's not yet anyways but um it's good it's good so well, and then uh, also rock and barbecue uh, on Instagram and Facebook. You can find us over there too. So um, we got a YouTube channel. I've, I've done a couple YouTube uh, videos, but um, I'm not the greatest on the editing thing. So <laughs> it takes a yeah, long me time. Yeah, me either. Me <laughs> either. Right. All right, man. Well, it's good right, to have so. you. Good to right get on. your info out there. Glad to talk to you. 
yeah, you learn too, a little guys. bit about you. Hopefully, um, you know, you can use this to do a little promoting too for people to understand where you're coming from and and to get behind uh, your barbecue sauces and stuff. Right on. All yeah, right. We're, we're, we're working, man. We're just uh, we're just trying to do it yeah. little baby steps. Yes, so. definitely. Definitely. Right on, well, Donald. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. We'll, we'll, Appreciate uh, it. We'll talk to you soon and see yeah. uh, see what we can figure out, see if we can spread some more of that uh, barbecue love, as uh, yeah. certain people say. Yeah, definitely, bro. All right, buddy. All God right. bless. See you, bud. All right, that was James with Rockin' BBQ. That's R O C K I N B B Q. And you can uh, find them all over the social media with that. Thanks for watching episode four of The Cud. And uh, like and subscribe. Take care.